Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to Yachting International Radio. You're with Kareen Rayson from The Crew Coach on your mental health. And today I have a very special guest and I am so pleased to have you here because I feel like we share so many amazing values and the conversations I do have with you are just so inspirational to me and gets me so excited. So yeah, welcome, Brendan. Focusing on a very important topic, mental awareness. No, it's mental health, Men's Health Month. But why we're connecting today is because we want to focus on men and mental health. And before we started this recording, you mentioned something that was very insightful based on a podcast that you listened to, and that is not separating mental health to health or physical health. We it's all encumbersome so yeah maybe if you can start sharing a little bit of insights from that podcast you listened to because i think that would be a great segue into this conversation thanks Kareen. likewise great to join you i enjoy our conversations i feel sometimes talking to you when you're sitting in my my home area of western australia that we share a little bit more yes i really enjoyed a recent podcast i am a podcaster and podcast listener rather and it was with a neuroscientist. And I'm not going to try and paraphrase, paraphrase a professional. However, she made just such one salient point. We have one body and one brain. We talk about body health and mental health as though they, they live in a different world. We have one health. And we need to look after the whole health. Mm. Physical fitness, mental, mental fitness, they stay together. Mm. Diet does not only affect your body, it affects your mind. Totally. All of these points come together. And I, I was almost embarrassed that I'd reached a certain age without just joining that so simply. Mm. Mental health seemed to live in a chapter off on its own that happened to other people. No, mental health is my health. It's how I feel every day. Yeah. It's all interconnected and it's weird that people try or society has tried to actually separate it now that you've framed it in that way. And I think about when people's mental health is impacted and we institutionalize them and we separate them from society instead of welcoming them and supporting them. And that was painful for me to see in the justice system because there were people there with mental health issues that should have never been put into incarceration and I'm like I I feel embarrassed at being a part of the society that ostracizes people with mental health issues yeah a absolutely and you just take it back to a very simple thing if you have a sprain Maybe go see a physical therapist who is a professionally trained person to deal with that problem. You'll tell your co-workers, oh, I've got a physio this afternoon. Oh, good, that uh, ankle of yours looks a little bit painful. Yes, thank you. When you're feeling not at your best, would you have the same confidence with your co-workers to say, just nipping out to see my, my therapist, just not feeling as good as I should right now. So I'm, I'm just going out to get my physio for mm. my mental health outlook. Mm. We don't talk about it in the same narrative. No. And but it is the same thing. Yes, it is the same thing. And the impact of the stigma around mental health issues and speaking up is just dire. Like the side effects, the consequences, how it not only impacts the individual, it impacts the team. And I know that you've seen a lot of things happen on board. And I'm not too sure if you feel comfortable in sharing some of those experiences to teach us how we could better manage our mental health, but more importantly, have healthier conversations on board when we are struggling. That's a big chapter, Corrine. Um, yes, I, and not the headline stories. Mm. Sometimes you just see a slight decay in someone's behavior. Mm. Maybe it involves substances, 
maybe it doesn't maybe it's even slighter where it's just their reactions to points their insecurities these little shifts are the death by a thousand cuts they are just little shifts and they really affect people mm. or someone we often talk about this with military that people become institutionalized and mm. can't find their way out yachting can institutionalize I, where yeah Everyone says, oh, the golden prison is a bit of a joke. But that's very real to some people. Mm. They are there. They actually don't know their way back out mm. into a normalcy mm. where you interact in a community. You do the day-to-day -day things that being part of a community is. If you've been in yachting too long, it's hard to come back to that. Yeah. I... I'm curious to know from your perspective, and I know a lot of crew members would also love to know from a, a captain's point of view, what do you think the common mental health issues could be that a captain would struggle with? Oh, I'm, I'm going to lay myself bare before you, Corrine. Um, loneliness. Uh -huh. You know that your conversations... Uh, look, I'll walk back. Um, there was a stage I was embarrassed that I was a little bit too young for the roles that I had. Very sadly, that's past and clear. That's a long time ago. So I'd be nervous that, am I, am I viewed as too young? Am I too flippant? Mm. Then I'd been in yachting for a while. I had a commercial background and commercial qualifications, but I approached it. So did my commercial colleagues validate me professionally do they respect me so i'd be self-conscious about on different levels did i think i had the skills to undertake the role did those skills show to my colleagues could i have a natural conversation with anyone or would they be guarded if so who would that be and how would that look so they are some of the things and a lot of crew members moving up through the, the deck officer process to captaincy, it's the fun conversation. They'll focus openly on ship handling. Mm. That's a process. Mm. That, it's also a very visible. That is not the challenge. Mm. I struggled with my communications. I had people needing me to hear them. Mm. And I wanted to solve problems they hadn't even spoken. Mm. It took years mm. to learn how to have respectful conversations with crew. Mm. And my data set to grow of different crew I've spoken to. Yes. Okay. So the loneliness that you mentioned, what do you think the options are for captains? Because I know, look, the identity that you acquire as a result of being a captain is that protector, the leader, the one that's invincible, that solves problems, as you've just mentioned. And a huge skill around emotional intelligence and leadership is vulnerability. And so there's that contrast between having it all together, being in charge, not breaking, and then being vulnerable and role modeling the behavior that you want to see on board. So people- that, That's such a good point. Um, such a great point. And I have moved through that journey. And at some point you really wish you were some master and commander just making wonderful decisions constantly. You know you're not. So with some maturity and experience, I tried being much more open with a large crew, showing that vulnerability. Some embraced it, others don't want it. They just want that leader out the front. They do not want to see a chink in that leader's armor. They just, and you have to be aware of who you're talking to at what time. Okay. Which side of yourself. You don't have one, one uh, side to show to everyone. Some people can't cope with their leader at sea, mid-ocean, saying, I'm very tired, I miss my family, 
and I'm pretty confronted by the weather systems in front of us oh, that are making me very nervous. No. They are not ready for that. I don't think a lot of people would be, to be honest. But some of your colleagues that you need to help you yeah. need to hear that so that they feel comfortable contributing. In terms of problem solving, creative problem solving. Correct. And to, and to support you. Yeah. To support you in, so, you know, you, Captain, cannot solve that problem on your own. I've been very fortunate. My closest friends in yachting are my co-captains over past years. If you're in the position to have a rotational partner, mm. that is your first trust and point of call. Mm. Yeah, okay. So to describe the meaning of vulnerability, because I think with conversations with crew on my social media platform, there is confusion around what that looks like. What does vulnerability mean to you? Vulnerability to me in my professional sphere mm. means not shielding that I do not have every answer at that moment. Mm. I find things challenging. Mm. I, I cannot, I know you want this from me right now. I don't have everything ready to go. I am trying to get through my day working very hard as you, as you, but there is more to it than that. And that's, for me, vulnerability is just showing my humanity. I hope that doesn't sound too as an inner box answer, but it, it really is. It's showing my humanity to the room. That makes total sense. So if there's a captain that is struggling and... What I commonly hear through having conversations with men is that, look, I didn't suffer from depression. I was just unhappy for three years. And no one wants to have that label. So they stay stuck because they're like, I don't have depress depression, therefore I don't need to see a doctor. I don't need to seek for help. I'm just really unhappy. So if someone is feeling that, how would they or what would you advise them in terms of reaching out for help like mentors or obviously you need to feel safe enough and comfortable enough to reach out for help what would you there's do? yeah what would i do there'll be a couple of stages here what would i have done early in my captaincy mm. i would have just kept it in it will get better it's fine i'm doing a good job I would have built the myth around what I'm doing. My male provider anxiety would have been kept at bay. I'm supporting my family. It's not a coal mine. I can just keep doing this every day. You can and you cannot. Mm. Your crew will see it before you do. You will build a myth that you're still doing a good job. My unhappiness isn't visible to others. It really is. So, you are in this situation, you are unhappy, we'll use that word, it's less confronting, you need to talk through what's making you unhappy, find your path. Yeah. If it's a professional, perfect, if it is your peer, colleague, possibly to get the full depth out of the conversation, it needs to be off the boat, the person at the other end, even if you are on the boat. Maybe it's a mentor, maybe it's a trusted colleague through your career. Maybe it was your last captain. One of my very early captains in my yachting career has been a lifelong unofficial mentor for me. It's very important. Maybe it is your partner. That can be a struggle because they, maybe they're raising your, your shared family a long way from home and they don't have the capacity to carry that weight as well mm. as their day. Mm. So I can't give a straight answer. I would search for my path now to speak to someone. Okay. And I have built a few of those paths over time. Yes, I'm looking forward to exploring that. But for, before I do, I'd love to ask you, in terms of building psychological safety at sea and getting your crew members to recognise the signs and symptoms to have authentic conversations so not like how are you going mate but how are you 
How are you really? How would you integrate that in your onboard culture? What would that look like in order to keep your team psychologically healthy? I have put some mechanisms in place, Kareem. I will answer this by saying I've never achieved it to the level I would want to achieve it for myself. Normalise the conversation. We captains are not medical professionals. We are not mental health professionals. What we can do is utilise the best from others. Mm. Uh, that it's an Australian campaign is irrelevant but they have wonderful literature around, are you okay? Mm. That was on the notice board constantly. Mm. It was the epilogue to every crew meeting. Mm. If you notice slight behavioral changes in your friends, just socially check, check it mm. as a friend. If you need a friend, speak to someone privately. If you need time, you'll be given time trying to normalise that it is a medical treatment as all medical treatments are. Mm. Trying to make someone's mental wellness the equivalent level to their physical wellness. Mm. As we've spoken earlier, Kareen, if you need to go somewhere to get your ankle treated, mm. you're, you also might need to speak to someone to get your unhappiness treated. Yes. Yes. I'd probably rather deal with the ankle, to be honest. It's probably a quicker path. Yeah. But I think the biggest one for a captain is just bring that dialogue in constantly so it just normalises. Use the literature that's out there. I support a firm called Centre for Corporate Health. This is not a commercial position. They just give great information. It's free to air. There's so many sources of wonderful... Just to normalise the conversation. Mm. So from a captain's perspective, once again, and all the duties that you have to fulfill, and I know it's a lot, it's quite an administrative role. And essentially, you are like the head of the pack, you're at the helm and looking after this big family of yours. And to have those conversations and check in with people, notice the signs, it's a lot of work. You've got to be onto it all the time. How realistic is it for captains and or what steps can they take in order to tap into crew welfare? You must know your people. Yeah. You must find a cultural touch point with each person for yourself. Do you have children the same age? Did you once holiday in their hometown? The, the touch point doesn't matter. You need to find it so that you have a place. And we're talking a lot of, especially on the larger yachts, a lot of cross cultures. Yeah. You need to find a touch point that gives you a chance to open a dialogue with each crew member. Mm -hmm. I found, I once had a captain, smaller yacht days. He said, I would visit every compartment on the vessel each day to check it was in that everything was safe. I've twisted that. The compartments are fine. They tend to look after themselves. Visit every person every day. Mm. In a in a ad hoc environment that's very natural but gives you that touch point. Because mm. if you don't if you're not seeing your people every day, you won't notice the it's subtle changes. Yeah. But if you're on charter, is it realistic? It's more important. Yes. Of course it's realistic. Okay. Yes. And I don't have enough hours in the day. Um, to all the management companies, I'm sorry for what I'm about to say. Yeah. Don't send the report back on time. Speak to your people. Yes. The and report the, will wait. Did you ever do performance reviews on board? Yes. Yeah. See, I think that's also so important. It, it's super important. I would say any chance to get outside support into a performance review process yeah. is critical. Yes. I, after a lot of years of doing them, I do not think I hold a strong competence. Yes. I would prefer to be shepherded through 
by a professional. Yeah. And that is not plugging anyone who does this, but after hundreds of performance reviews, mm. I might have even regressed. I am not a professional mm. at providing that environment mm. and giving someone what they need from that review. Yeah. I prefer it when someone is moderating with me to provide a professional service. Yeah. That is not always available, but that is a Nirvana approach. It is so yeah. important. Yeah, no, I agree. And it can, it can cause a lot of complications if it's not done correctly and not managed. Like I do uh, performance reviews on yachts and what I tell them is it's an opportunity to learn and grow. And we're here to support you in your learning. If you personalize it, it's going to be detrimental to your growth. And you do have to have an emotional maturity to take on feedback. And feedback is a gift. Uh, that's how I see mm. it. It's not I agree. There is something, if we go back, just replay where we were a minute ago, visiting people, the performance review really should just wrap up all those little tiny conversations into a professional. There shouldn't be anything new put on the plate that day. Mm. Because you've had your little micro conversations all the way through. Mm. And then all this is point three. Hey, we spoke on this last Wednesday. There's nothing new there. Mm. If everything on that performance review is brand new to that crew member, something's really wrong. Yes. And I've, I've done that. I'm not holding myself up saying this is how I do it. Yeah. But I have delivered a performance review where someone looked at it and said, is this mine? That's a complete failure on my ability to communicate in the gap between the performance review. Mm -hmm. and so I, there shouldn't be anything new there. Yes. And what I can understand is crew are craving that connection as well. Mm -hmm. And what I'm noticing is that they're not getting a lot of feedback and all they want to know is how they're doing. And I'm sure captains must feel the same way because they... I mean, they would only get feedback if they're lucky from the owners. But I know a lot of captains are like, I don't know how I'm doing. Like, I'm not getting complaints about what I'm spending. So I'm gathering I'm doing okay. But they need more than that. The I one feedback the captain gets is they have a job today. The next feedback they get is there is no job today. That is about the feedback path of captains in yachting. And I'm sorry to say that openly, that must but there, there are exceptions, but fundamentally the feedback loop is, you have a job, keep quiet, you're fine. You don't have a job, there's your feedback point. Oh, I, I really feel for captains, to be honest. I really do. It's, it's a great job. It's a wonderful job. I've loved, once every moment, that's too cliche. I have, as I've said, I've, I've grown, I've been challenged. I have mm. all of those rewards. Mm. If you think it is a fun job, you're in the wrong space. Mm. It is rewarding at so many levels. It will take you to the edges of your professional competence. Yeah, yeah. You need to find your fun somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why you need your outlets. And that's why you need to take care of your overall health and see it from a holistic point of view and not separate, going back to the start of our conversation. I know that you're going to head to another interview in about three minutes, but can you please share with me why and how Yacht Crew Help came about? Yachtcrewhelp.org. It came about from several events. Um, in my, that walk through my path and walk through yachting's path, um, critical events involving loss of life. Underneath that was all of what we've just talked about. There wasn't enough tools out there to one, help those in need, two, help the people out there trying to lead their teams. So Yacht Crew Help, I Swan International Seafarers Welfare Assistance Network, they already had, for commercial mariners, the Seafarers Welfare Net with a helpline. Yacht Crew Help, we realised that didn't speak to our yacht crew. 
we need to, to get something that felt more for yachts. Mm. What we also wanted to do was just normalise it, that it just became part of the dialogue. Everyone knows it's there. It's non-commercial, full charitable, supported by some great industry leading firms. It is a free service for crew on and off their yachts. Hopefully they don't need the fence at the edge of the cliff, which is the emergency support line. It's there, but it'll also have a lot of educational material just to help you grow. Corrine, as you do, you help people grow. Some people may just prefer going through a, a website for a little while until they grow enough ready to speak. But yeah. that's your crew help. It's about to launch. We're recording at the start of November. And I think it's just long overdue in yachting. Yeah. Well, congratulations. It's phenomenal. I'd say it's, it's a large team. My, my role was really just to bang the pots and pans and try and gain enough support for its launch. Which is a huge job. I know <laughs> the amount of energy and work that needs to go into saying, hey, we need this. Can you make it come alive? Like it's not easy to get people to listen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I won't list the sponsors or the represent representational bodies, but there's been some great support out there um, and so interesting. Some of the founders of some of our great companies, our ex yacht crew, the moment they started hearing about it, they just said, yes, we needed this when we were at sea and that's a decade ago. Where has it been? Yeah, wow. Amazing. Well, yeah, congratulations. And I look forward to tapping into those resources as well and sharing them with our community. Likewise, Kareen, I think what you do is, is excellent. I, again, normalise, normalise. The conversations with you, I grow from, I'm sure the crew benefit from. The more this happens, it's just a natural event in a crew's journey through their seafaring career the better the industry is going to be. Mm. Thank you so much, Brendan, for your time and joining me today. I really appreciate it. Always a pleasure.